I do love Amazon websites and content websites where you earn some money from affiliate revenue and probably some display ads. But the thing is, there's a little bit of a kind of a runway that you have to deal with. It takes a little while to get traffic from Google. And let's face it, Google is not the best partner for small people like us, where we can't uh, call up anyone to ask, what's going on with this latest Google update? So one option that you have for a side hustle, especially to get started fairly quickly, is ePrintables. That's over on Etsy. And I was talking with my buddy, Cody Berman, and he's found great success with printables over on Etsy. The thing is, you can get started pretty quick. So I asked Cody, hey, how long does it take for someone to get started? What's the absolute fastest that someone has earned some money using Etsy with digital products? That's another cool thing. So I asked Cody about this. He's going to answer us here. I actually talked to Cody for a full interview. It was a few months ago. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll play the clip of him talking just uh, yesterday. He recorded it. He told me how fast it is to actually earn some money. And then I'll roll it into sort of the, the longer interview where you could hear a little bit more. And I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out some of the other interviews that I've done with Cody. The cool thing, he's 26 years old. He's um, earning about a million bucks a year online and through his various side projects. And he's super smart. He's very energetic. He is a cool guy. I've actually hung out with him several times at various conferences. Check out the interviews if you want to learn a little bit more. And Cody does have a course, which I'll link to in the description and show notes. If you want to learn a little bit more, you just check those links out. Some of our students have actually made sales the day they joined the course. Definitely not typical results, but we've seen it happen a couple of times. Most of the time, if people join around a holiday, a big event, some really popular time of the year on Etsy, we'll see them get sales really, really quickly after joining. But I'd say typically it probably takes a couple of weeks for someone to get their first sale. And after that, it's like a snowball effect. Someone might get a sale here, then a sale there, and then four months in, they're getting sales every other day. And then six months in, they're getting sales every day. And it takes a long time. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of putting up different products. But I'd say, yeah, a couple of weeks is typically the timeline for people to start making their first sales and start to start seeing a consistent flow of money coming in from the side hustle. We're, we're talking e-printables on Etsy, which is a, a business model that, I mean, I think a lot of us probably are unaware of and it's pretty straightforward to start. So we're going to get dig into the details of that. And the cool thing is Cody and I have actually known each other for a couple of years. I interviewed Cody, I think back in episode 180, 133, that is. So way back. So we've uh, known each other for a couple of years and got to hang out recently in Florida for FinCon. Uh, Cody, how's it going today? It is going, man. Like I like we were talking about before we hit record, it was awesome catching up with you guys at FinCon. And yeah, I can't believe it's been that long. I think it's got to be three years now at this point where we've kind of known each other, at least through the online world. It is always fun to hang out in, in person, especially conferences like that where you're, you're, you, know, you don't have your normal day-to-day -day, uh, like things you have to tend to. So we can go and party and hang out. Although I'm a I'm an old man now, so I want to go to bed early. <laughs> and I think, um, yeah, I just, I run out of steam quick, but it's still fun. And I encourage people to, you know, check out conferences if they, if they haven't. So let's, um, let's go back. So we do know each other kind of through the FI community and through side hustles. We actually have a lot of like sort of common interests. So how did you um, get into podcasting, which you're a podcaster, you're an entrepreneur, you have a lot of different interests, but I know that you started your career elsewhere. So can you kind of walk us through like, you know, going to college, getting out of college, your first job and, and how you ended up doing what you're doing now? Yeah. So rewind back to my sophomore year of college. I was 19 and my mom actually handed me the four hour work week. And that book just like changed my life. The idea that I didn't have to trade my time for money on a linear basis, like I didn't have to work this number of hours to get this paycheck based on my pay rate was revolutionary. So after that, I became obsessed with what Tim Ferriss called muses, what is more commonly now called side hustles or just small businesses in general. 
And I just kind of went after it. I tried a couple of businesses. Some of them failed. Some of them hit. And so I'm kind of doing this all throughout college. I end up getting a, a big boy job, but only for a very short stint. And the reason for that was I kind of got introduced to like the whole fire community, like Mr. Money Mustache. I was reading him and Brandon, the mad scientist. And my plan at the time was right when I graduated, I'm going to work for like six or seven years in corporate finance. That's where I was working, commercial real estate lending. I'm just going to like make as much money as I possibly can, be super frugal and then retire at like 29. That was my plan. But as I started getting deeper into the community and kind of leaning more toward the entrepreneurial side of the fire movement and seeing people just like crushing it, making hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars a year, I'm like, I want to try this entrepreneurship thing. So I ended up quitting that corporate job seven months in, started focusing more on passive income businesses like the Etsy printables, the e-printables that we're going to talk about today instead of the more active side hustles, more active businesses that I was focusing on before, like freelancing and just things where I was trading my time for money. Because even though, you know, the Tim Ferriss four hour work week thing, like it takes a while. And as you know, Doug, to build those income streams up, you don't start a blog, you don't start a YouTube channel, you don't launch a digital product, an online course, and you don't make like millions of dollars tomorrow. It's a slog. Like you got to really grind it out. You got to put in the time and eventually the fruits of your labor kind of pay off, but it's, it's a grind. So started kind of pivoting more toward the passive stuff. And that's where I'm at today. I'm like, just, I call myself like a passive income expert because I'm always trying different passive income streams. I'm always trying to build the next thing that's going to pay me in perpetuity. And that's kind of how I stumbled into Etsy and printables and then all the other stuff I got going on. Gotcha. Yeah. And before we hit record, you said, oh yeah, I've been busy starting a couple new businesses. And I was like, what are you talking about, man? You already, I think the last time we talked, you said, you had something like 19 sources of income. So <laughs> I don't want you to list them all, but can you tell us, you know, a few of them, maybe the ones you're most excited about, maybe even some of the newer ones too? Yeah. So definitely the one we're talking about today is like printables, digital downloads. I sell those on Etsy, on Shopify, on my own website where I have like a print on demand store. Also sell eBooks and online courses. That's kind of all in like the digital arena. Then I have a blog, a podcast, YouTube channel. So for, from those sources, I'm doing like sponsorships. I'm doing affiliates. I'm doing advertising. I'm doing like collaborations. Then I'm also a real estate investor. So I have some long-term rentals, some short-term rentals. I'm doing my first flip right now. I'm totally blanking to see if I have any other ones. Wholesaling is something that I've been really looking into and like building systems for that. But uh, digital courses and digital products are probably like my bread and butter, like where I spend the most time, where I've learned the most, where I've had the most failures, but also the most successes because you learn the most from your failures. So I definitely spend the most time in the kind of digital product arena, but I still dabble in all the other stuff I just mentioned. Cool. And yeah, that's, that's plenty of stuff. And it, it sounds, it sounds very tiring, but one thing that I love with the, with the digital product area is it's sort of infinitely scalable. And we both had the corporate jobs. I, I was in it for like, you know, nine or 10 years versus your few months or nine months or so. But um, you don't have, you know, a warehouse full of inventory, right? Tying up capital uh, compared to a corporate job. There's only so much you can make. There's bosses ahead of you. There's an artificial ceiling. But with the digital products, like you really have a huge capability. Of course, real estate's a, a different animal and I'm not into that. So we, of course, we'll focus on the digital area. And for the people that may be thinking, ah, you know, this, this kid, for the people that are listening on the podcast, Cody, how old are you? 26. 26. So uh, a young man full, full of energy, full head of beautiful hair as well, which I'm so <laughs> jealous of. But um, the point is, some people might be thinking, ah, he's probably just making a little bit of money. And I know that you do share some of your, you know, income and revenue uh, numbers. So as much as you feel comfortable, can you share like what you've earned over the last couple of years? Yeah. So I can walk you through each year. And actually it's crazy. Like you said, my income has doubled every year since I've taken entrepreneurship full time, which just wouldn't have been possible in my corporate job. Not that I'm hating on corporate jobs because you can hit financial independence. You can make a lot of money, but the path that I went on would not have been even close to possible in corporate. So my first year, I went full-time in entrepreneurship. And actually before that, 2018, I was working my corporate job. I was side hustling like at nights, mornings, weekends, whenever I could, making like $1,500 a month because a lot of the effort and time and energy that I was spending was going into vehicles that would later pay me, like my blog, like just building up my personal brand. A lot of stuff that the ROI wasn't high at the time, but I'm really glad I did it in retrospect. So that first year, 2018, where I was like really side hustling, I was making like $1,500 a month, which, you know, that was... 
that was a decent amount of money to sell a kid who just got out of college. And I was pretty pumped about it. And that like could like cover my expenses at the time. Then the next year, 2019, took entrepreneurship full time. So we get about eight grand a month. Year after that, 2020, about 17 grand a month. 2021, 34 grand a month. And this year, I'm averaging 80 grand a month in income. Okay. And 80 grand a month is around that magic number, right? So what, what does that mean? The million mark. Yeah, I should knock on wood. Don't have any wood around me, but I should be hitting that million mark by the end of this year, my first seven figure year. Congratulations. That's, uh, that's amazing. And yeah, that's so cool. So Appreciate what, it, man. <laughs> what, what does that mean to you? I mean, you scraped by like those early years, you were investing, you had faith. Yeah, just kind of psychologically, what, what kind of a win is that for you? It has been honestly surreal. Like even just looking at the numbers, looking at my investment accounts, looking at my bank account, just looking how much money's coming in. I'm like, sometimes I got to pinch myself, but then I got to pat myself on the back for like all the hard work that I put in. Cause I feel like I am not someone who is good at recognizing their wins. Sometimes I'm always just like pushing toward the next field goal, but man, it's been like super rewarding. And honestly, the impact that I've been able to have now as a creator, like, you know, we're going to talk about the online course that I created. And now I've been creating multiple online courses. Like some of our students have now quit their jobs. And like we had a woman who made 150 grand last year on Etsy after just starting a couple of years ago. Like it's been absolutely nuts. And I just I'm super blessed to be in the position I am both monetarily and just impact wise. It's been it's been pretty surreal, man. Perfect. Well, yeah, let's shift gears into Etsy. So you um, actually mentioned one of the success stories. So, yeah, can we just dive into some of the results before we get into the particular? So. That sounds like one of the, you know, exceptional standout cases. So someone, you know, working for a couple of years, now they're making about 150K per year from an Etsy printable situation. So what are some other results? Or maybe you can also give us like an average. So, you know, you don't know what niche the person's in or what they're focusing on, but yeah, what might someone expect if they're going to put some time into this? So it's totally... A situation where you get out what you put in. So the people who are doing the keyword research, who are like really creating spectacular products and just like doing all the homework and due diligence up front, like with anything, those are the ones that are really going to shine and succeed. So we've had a few dozen people who have like up and quit their jobs because their Etsy income started replacing their regular income. For most folks, it's usually just like an additional income stream for them. So we don't like market the course as like quit your job, even though some people have done it. It is a side hustle. And like it's a side hustle for me too. Like I'm not making all of my money from that, but being able to make like a couple extra thousand per week sometimes or month or whatever it is for your situation is, you know, that can really impact someone's bottom line. So we have had some people who like one woman posted, like I was able to pay my mortgage this month. I was able to cover the groceries. Like I made money while I was in the hospital for the past month and luckily she's okay. But, you know, she wasn't even working on her shop. And that's kind of the, the power of digital products that we were talking about earlier. Like you don't have to be trading your time for it. You just create it once and then you try to sell that thing to an unlimited number of people. So yeah, man, the, just some of the success stories that have come out, like the job quittings and the, even just like someone covering their mortgage or paying for groceries like that, that can really impact a family who has never experienced a side hustle like that before. Awesome. And one thing I'm excited to get into, we'll, we'll hold off on it, but you mentioned uh, keyword research. So I know there's an SEO component and the thing is, you know, our audience here is uh, usually very skilled in SEO and keyword research. So they could take this, something they're very good at elsewhere and bring it onto a platform where maybe people aren't as familiar. So let's start there. Etsy, what is it for people that have never been on Etsy before? So Etsy is the Amazon of handmade products. And it might sound weird saying handmade, but basically what all that means is it's not just a bunch of copycat products coming out of China. Like even in the digital product space, People can't just like throw up the same exact digital product as 100 other people. It's not going to work. You're going to get taken down. You're not going to get sales. It's It just doesn't work like that. So Etsy is like a, a space for creators. And when I first got into this space, I was a dude and I had never been on Etsy before, quite honestly. Like I'd literally never been on the site before. But my friend Julie had told me, she was like, hey, I made like six grand last year selling these printables. I spent like 50 hours creating them, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm in. Like I'm a passive income dude. Like this, this is this sounds like something for me. So I started getting familiar with the platform and lo and behold, there's actually like quite a few number of guys and women who like just like neutral products on there. So if you're thinking like, I'm a guy who's never been on Etsy, trust me, I was in that exact same situation before, but I've kind of, you know, become familiar with the site, been familiar with the products that are going to do well on there through keyword research and competitive 
research and just using all the tools that I have available to me. And it's been, uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty amazing. I remember my first couple of months on Etsy were really, really slow. And I didn't really have a mentor, didn't really know what I was doing, just like created a bunch of stuff. And I'm not a graphic designer, by the way. So I, it was like <laughs> some of these old designs, when I look back, I'm like, oh my God, like these, these are terrible. <laughs> I was creating like planners and calendars and like task lists. And like, I'd create like a media kit for podcasters, or I'd create like an ebook template, like all these different random products. And it wasn't until the February after I started my shop. So I started in, in uh, October. In February, I'd made a bunch of like Valentine's Day printables. And I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna like try my hand at this seasonal product thing, like it might work out. And the cool thing, especially I know your audience knows about like just trends and like keyword research and demand is, I mean, especially if you're someone who blogs about anything seasonal, you know that the search volume for those keywords is just like through the roof, like around Valentine's Day, any Valentine's Day keyword, you know, 500 X or around Christmas, that keyword research, that keyword volume 500 X. So I created all these Valentine's Day printables. And actually, by the end of that week, like the Valentine's week, it was like the ninth to the 16th or something. I had made over $800 from just a handful of printables that I created. And this is like when I just got started. So like after that, I was completely addicted and just like just kept hammering new products and going after new trends and new seasonal things. And that's kind of how my journey got started out, though. That's cool. And we follow each other on Instagram. So I remember following along and I think you were posting. Uh, yeah. results like screenshots of like your earnings and i was like man is it really is it like that or I, like I it really is really know. like that <laughs> yeah. so w what are some other products on etsy so you said like handmade stuff and it, like my wife ordered like a hand knitted uh hat or whatever like a winter <laughs> hat uh last last year so that i'm thinking that but they have like printable stuff like can you go a little bit in depth on that yeah so Definitely don't mean physical when I mean handmade because I'm all about scale. I'm all about passive income. So right now, the breakdown on Etsy, about 80% of product sales are physical products still. So it's still a physical product dominated site. About 20% are digital products. And that percentage has been growing year over year over year. So things like I just mentioned, any template or kit that you could possibly imagine, like you're a podcaster, you need a podcast media kit if you're pitching to sponsors, you could go right now and buy one on Etsy for 10 bucks. But and if that person is showing up on the first page of search results, there's what, like 2 million podcasts now. And let's say 100 of those people buy their thing for 10 bucks. That's $1,000. You know, it's like, right. it's the scale that you can have with these digital products is just infinite. So yeah, things like any type of template, that you, I know you have a lot of business owners and people who are already like online in your audience, anything B2B like that is a great place to start. You can create it for free on Canva, share the Canva link via Etsy with someone who's buying it, sell it for 10 bucks try to sell it to as many people as possible. Then there's also like the more, I guess, fun side of Etsy, not the business owner. So B2C, where you're selling like invitations, planners, calendars, games, cards for different events. Like there's there's a whole world of other printables out there. Like little gift tags for stuff. Like those are really big around certain holidays. I mean, I could probably rattle off a list of like a hundred plus, but I can just, actually, I have a list I could just give to your audience too if they want printable ideas that we can uh, cool load up in the show notes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We'll link up to that for sure. Okay. <laughs> so I don't just rattle off a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, like um, on the Amazon side, right? Like we usually focus on physical products. You could just browse on Amazon to get some ideas. So you can go browse on Etsy, I'm sure, and get ideas, different categories and see like just what is out there and what people are doing, right? Absolutely. Actually, a good analogy I'd like to make, and you have the perfect background for this, for those who are watching on video, not just audio. So I actually just posted a reel pretty recently about how selling digital products is like a concert. So if you were to take one of those guitars off the back wall, Doug, and just start playing for one person or for 10,000 people, it wouldn't be any different on your end. Like you're just playing the song, whatever, like it's ha as many people as you can possibly get to listen to it are the people listening to it. And it's, it's no extra effort on your end. It's the same thing with digital products. Like you create one digital product and it doesn't matter if one person or 10,000 people buys that thing. It's no extra effort on your end because all of the effort is in the creation of that thing, the digital product or the song and this analogy. So I just like to use that as like a frame of reference. Like this is why digital products are so superior to physical products most of the time, unless you have like a fulfillment center. And I know you teach some stuff about Amazon FBA, but on Etsy with handmade, like that knitted hat that your wife bought, that takes a long time for that person to create. And they get to handle the shipping, the inventory, the packaging, like all of that stuff. So on Etsy, digital products, in my opinion, are king. Perfect. And 
We don't have to go too in depth, but you actually had a physical product business. Uh, maybe did. it's still around. It's, it's disc golf stuff, right? I still do have that. And we're actually looking at selling some of the molds. We had someone who's interested in acquiring. I have spent next to zero time on that business over the past couple of years. It's made like a couple hundred dollars over the past few years, just people buying random old inventory from our fulfillment center. But I have focused all of my energy on digital. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that's fun. That's a good stoner sport I used to play all the time. Okay. So let's talk about how much time someone should expect to put in if they want to get started. So it sounds like it is fairly passive once you get it rolling, but initially, what kind of time investment are we looking at? I mean, if you wanted, if you just have an idea right now while you're listening and you want to go on Canva, which is a free graphic design program for those who don't know, you could probably whip something up in like two to three hours. That was like around the time it took me for my first printable. I'm a lot faster now and I could probably create something in like 45 minutes to an hour. But I mean, if you have an idea in your head right now and you just, open up canva.com, start creating, I'd say two to three hours. And then it doesn't really take any time at all to create an Etsy shop. You just got to like kind of put your info in there and you do need a product to start your Etsy shop. So do the creation first and then open the shop afterward. If you're someone who's more analytical, which it sounds like your audience is like the perfect crowd for that, like they know how to do keyword research and look at competition and look at demand, then you probably want to maybe build a spreadsheet and like put, you know, a hundred products that you'd be interested in creating and have like you know, this is how many people are selling that product. This is the keyword, like this is the keyword demand for that product. This is how many searches it's getting per month and do a more methodical approach. But yeah, I mean, it, it totally depends on the type of person you are. For me, I like doing a little bit of research up front just because I don't want to waste my time creating a product that nobody's searching for. If I go into, there's a program called E-Rank, which is like the keyword research equivalent for Etsy. Like you would use a, an Ahrefs or a SEMrush or Uber Suggest or whatever for Google. It's the keyword equivalent for Etsy. So I'm always like, before I even open up Canva and create a product, like I'm always doing a little bit of preliminary keyword research in E-Rank. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's go deeper into E-Rank because yeah, we are nerds here. So we want to get into <laughs> those details. So E-Rank, is that an external tool or is that by Etsy? That is an external tool. And actually we have met and talked to the founder, Anthony Wolf. He's a super smart guy, Australian dude. And he is just like all about Etsy. He got really deep into Etsy. I think his wife was selling and then he started selling and he's just built this like amazing tool that pulls from the Etsy algorithm. It will give you like a rating for all of your listings in your shop. So like you want to get all your shop listings up to an A. It'll show, okay, you want to type in, we're recording this in October. If you wanted to create something for Halloween, for example, going back on the seasonal thing, something that was really popular last year was a take one, like just take one candy sign. And people would put that on their bowls or on their doors or whatever, because, you know, kids just basically rush the door and take like 15 candies and run away. Yeah. So if you want to look up that, for example, like you want to do like Halloween, take one candy sign, type that into E-Rank, it'll say, OK, there's, you know, 700 searches per month. And then you can actually narrow it down like, oh, in October, there's actually 15,000 searches. And you can see how many people are selling a competitive product with competing tags or titles or uh, keywords in their description. And then, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can do with E-Rank, but that's like my go-to go -to tool when it comes to keyword research on Etsy. A lot of people, I guess they get, not upset, but they're like, oh, why should we even look at search volume? Because um, the data is not accurate in you know some of the tools that you mentioned before, like Ahrefs, SEMrush, Ubersuggest, whatever. They're just estimates. And, and I mean, I, I think it's valuable to know that. So how confident are you in the search volume numbers from E-Rank? Is it pretty reliable? Does it just give you a ballpark in a relative sense from one keyword to the next? I think it is a bit better than some of the tools you just mentioned. I think Etsy has a little less of a shroud over its algorithm than like a Google, for example, because Google's just like, what the hell are you doing, Google? It's like impossible to right. kind of get behind the curtain and see how everything is calculated there. I think Etsy is a little bit easier for these sites to figure out because for me, like the ones that I found, like the unicorns that have a ton of search volume and low competition. And then I go and create that product like it crushes. So I have I've had really good experience. I mean, obviously, it's not one to one, like you said, like a lot of these are guesses. They don't have the actual exact search stats from Etsy, but I think they're whatever algorithm they're using is pretty good. What I will say is, you know, a lot of us are very keyword focused and I let's that's how I am. But some people who are like are just always online and always ahead of the trends. Sometimes the search volume won't even be there because it's something so new. But if you can be the first to market with that product, like, you know, something COVID related, there was a ton of COVID printables that came out like 
right at the beginning of 2020, like, you know, must wash your hand stuff or just like COVID-19 intake forms, like all this random stuff that, of course, it's not going to have any keyword vol- like research volume because no one was searching for that beforehand, like before March 2020. But if you can be first to market and you have some like brilliant idea of something that's up and coming, that's another good way to have a product that will take off. Okay. And you mentioned one thing, which is like what everyone looks for. That's the low competition, high search <laughs> volume, high profit. Yeah. Are there many of those out there or is it you know, kind of like everywhere else where if it's really good, someone is kind of already moving in that direction? It is definitely hard to find. I'm not going to lie and say it's super easy. But what I will say is that the amount of sophisticated Etsy sellers versus sophisticated bloggers in your audience's example is a, a, t- a tiny fraction. I'd say like less than 5% of Etsy sellers are sophisticated. A lot of them don't know how to use keywords research tools. They're just like creating products that they think are going to be good, that they'd want to use themselves. And you know, they're just like crafters that want to make an extra buck. But if you can take like the real scientific keyword research approach, keyword research approach, you are going to crush those 95% of people that are just kind of hobbyists hoping they can make a buck. Okay. And th- this makes perfect sense. And it, Cody, I know you've heard people say, you know, use your unfair advantage. So everyone in the audience, your unfair advantage <laughs> is all this stuff we usually talk about. Exactly. And you're going to take it to a different market where your competition doesn't know that stuff yet or very few people. So this is your unfair advantage, everyone. Like a lot of times it's harder to identify, but this is a perfect example of like, take a skill set from a certain arena and then take it to another place where everyone's unfamiliar or most people. So I love that. Now, with the, you make it sound fairly easy and I know everything's a, a, a grind and it takes longer than we think. What kind of mistakes do beginners often make? I think people give up too early. Like someone will create two digital products and they don't sell. And then they're like, oh man, this sucks. I'm giving up. It's a numbers game. And you know, as bloggers, you probably know that too. Like you probably thought you had this article that's going to crush it. And then it gets like zero hits and it's just not showing up in search results. That happens. And that's fine. Like it's just part of business. So for me, like until I started like putting up volume on Etsy in terms of like how many listings I had, I wasn't seeing crazy results. Like I had, like I mentioned before, my first couple months, I had like 25 dud products that were just like absolute crap because I didn't know what I was doing. I did, wasn't following any like graphic design standards. It, they weren't that helpful. I wasn't doing keyword research. It was just like all the wrong things. So I think a lot of people just like think it's going to be a home run and maybe they're missing one piece that you know, their future self would be able to see. But as a beginner, someone just starting out, they're just like, oh man, screw this. I give up because they're missing one piece of the equation. Got it. And uh, just you have a course, which we'll, we'll share uh, links to it and stuff like that. But in your course, do you happen to have like Cody's failed products like b- torn down? Like that would be kind of entertaining to see and helpful, of course, because <laughs> it shows you what not to do. Yeah, we have both of so myself and my business partner, Julie, the ones who launched the ePrintables course. We have both of our failures in there. And we also kind of reminisce on our five biggest mistakes as beginning Etsy sellers. So that's actually one of our most popular videos in the course. And people say like, oh, this is so valuable. Thank you so much. Because like we just made the dumbest mistakes that in retrospect, we're like, why would you ever do that? But at the time, you just don't know what you're doing. You got to learn through failure and trial and error. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's fun to make fun of yourself later too. So. <laughs> okay. So it sounds uh, fairly straightforward. Um, quick question about your product specifically. I know you just do it, you know, just a small amount of time, but like how many products do you have? Are they all sort of interrelated? Is there any cohesive piece to those products like with your store? So not really with my store. Some people have really niched down. Like we have one woman, Jen, who niched down to the wedding space and who's crushing it. I think she did like 100 or 120K last year in revenue, which was awesome. For me, I kind of am a jack of all trades. And I think that is partially because I I own a course. So I'm always dabbling in different stuff because like I'm someone who you shouldn't talk about it unless you've done it. So I'm trying like, all these editable printables and then I'm creating games and then I'm creating like seasonal printables and I'm creating a lot of these B2B things like a podcast media kit is actually something I sell in my shop. So my shop is kind of all over the place. But the thing with that is it's it's different than Google in that if you just have like a jack of all trades blog, you're probably not going to rank like it's much better as you know, you talk about this all the time, Doug, to have a niche site, like the riches are in the niches. But on Etsy, people aren't like coming to your shop and then like a la carte picking. Usually they're just searching for the product they want. They see you on the first page of Etsy, they buy your thing, and then you never see them again. 
Um, okay. So it's a, it's a little bit different than like Google where you're, you kind of want your blog to be all about the same thing because you want people clicking around to like not get confused and you don't want like one thing on the best Halloween costumes and then the next thing is how to make money on Etsy. Like that just doesn't make sense. Um, but it's a, it's a bit different on Etsy. Okay, cool. That makes sense to me. Now, it sounds like people could get started pretty quickly. Are there any uh, paid tools or any other paid things uh, that people need to think about with startup cost? So you can start for literally 20 cents is what it costs to list a product on Etsy. The things I do pay for, I pay for E-Rank Pro. So it gives me like just some extra features and like you can get by with the free version, especially if you're just starting out, but you just have like more in-depth research tools and you can find out more about the keywords you're looking at and you can like look at different trends and just like all this different stuff. So I pay for E-Rank Pro. It's like 10 bucks a month. It's really not a huge cost. And then I also pay for Canva Pro which is that free graphic design program that I mentioned. But with the pro version, you have access to different file types. You have access to like different color schemes. You can add a brand kit in there. You can have a background remover tool. Like there's some just like cool stuff in there that's worth it for, I think it's 12 bucks a month. It's totally worth it for me. So, I mean, really, those are like the two, I would say must haves if you want to like get really serious. And that's a whopping $22 a month. So it's not, <laughs> right. not breaking the bank. Yeah. And I, I use Canva like probably every day or every other day for like YouTube oh, thumbnails. Love it. So yeah, it's it's definitely worth it. And the the background remover is like one of the best tools. It's so, oh, so simple. <laughs> I, I don't know why it's hard to do in other tools, but okay, awesome. And let's see with E rank. Uh, just slightly uh, curious. So you said it's just ten bucks a month. Do you have to like pay for a year or is it like, you know, monthly, something like that? You can that? do monthly. Yeah. You don't have to pay for the year up front. You can just pay month by month. And like, if you say, oh, this side hustle isn't for me, which is totally cool, then you can just stop after like month two. Cool. So a lot of people in the audience, they hopefully they already have like a niche site, hopefully getting traffic, they're earning some money. And I see this as a great way to like add some brandability to their site. Um, a lot of people in the audience also, you know, they create sites and they sell them on places like Empire Flippers. And this is like a really cool way where you have like an audience uh, built in market over on Etsy, another revenue stream that's outside of the normal areas. So I think it's a great opportunity to add, you know, a few hundred, maybe even a few thousand if someone really gravitates toward it. So can you talk about adding an Etsy shop, a printable section? to an existing website that maybe already has traffic, maybe an email list, but they haven't done anything in the digital product realm. Yeah. So this is actually one of my most exciting things to talk about. And I'm hoping I'm going to blow some of your listeners' minds here because like adding printables to any blog will just like 10x your brandability, your revenue. Like it's just, it's just nuts. And it's, it's a lot more than you might think. So a lot of people might think, okay, I'm just going to like add a you know, printable section to my blog and hopefully I'll sell some printables that are related to my niche. But what they don't think about is, and you probably have heard this a million times, the money is in the list. So if you're someone who doesn't currently have an email list, or maybe you do, and it's like not growing very fast, printables is hands down, or digital products, hands down, the fastest way to grow an email list. The old join my newsletter just doesn't really work anymore. But if you can add a high value, super targeted, like five page ebook, 10 page ebook, multi page printable on whatever your niche site is, and maybe you have it as a pop-up. Maybe you have it at the top of every single blog post. And it's like, let's say you have a niche site on gardening tools. I don't know why I picked that. Well, let's just run with it. So now you have like this five-page ebook on like the, you know, all of the top tools that you need to like crush your garden in 2022. You are going to have so many more people opt into that and join your email list, become part of your e ecosystem than with the, hey, join my free newsletter if you want to learn more about gardening. Like it is night and day. When we made that switch, on our site, our conversion rate went from like, you know, 0.3%. It was something horrible with the join my newsletter to over 10%. Wow. Crazy numbers, like crazy numbers. So do not sleep on printables as lead magnets, which then you can like, if you have any other products, whether it's like ebooks or online courses or coaching, mentorship, whatever, getting them in the door with a, pr a free printable on your site and then upselling them on stuff later on. Because if you have a big sizable email list, a, a, an email list that's super targeted, like, and you know, you're talking about selling on Empire Flippers and websites like that, like that is a huge asset. People will pay a lot for a hyper-targeted email list. So that's like one of the unknown unique benefits. I love talking about it because people's minds are blown when I talk about when I talk about it and when they actually put it into practice, you can like seriously just like 
blow up your audience if you start to incorporate printables into just like the everyday pages on your site. Got it. And just to clarify, so the the printables, like do they, does the person who signs up for the email list get like a link to go download on Etsy? Is it like that integration or? I would or say don't that? even, for what I'm talking about here, I would say just like skip Etsy altogether for the lead magnet part. So when you're just like giving okay. them an opt-in or freebie, just like send it send through it. your site. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Or through your email service provider. Got the, it. the cool thing is though, Doug, like now talking about the first part, because I know you were kind of asking like, hey, what if you add a printable shop as part of your website? If you have someone who has downloaded a free printable from you and you've already created a lot of value, you're almost training them to like, like that type of content. So now if you have a printable shop, whether hosted through Etsy or through like your own site on WooCommerce, for example, because that's the other cool thing about printables. Once you create it, you can just like put it on as many places as you possibly can to get sales. But what I was saying is, what I was saying is these people are now trained to like printables. They're, it's like something they're, they're familiar with. Like they already got this five page best gardening tools ebook from you. And now you're like, hey, you know, if you like that ebook, I actually have this whole suite of other digital products in my Etsy store or on my website via WooCommerce or on Amazon or wherever. And now they're more likely to buy because you've already provided a ton of value and you've trained them to appreciate and like products like that. So awesome. yeah, man, there's just like so many synergies that comes with printables and blogging. So I love that your audience is already doing one of them. Very cool. So we kind of already talked about competition, um, and I know that E-Rank will give you more information. Any other details about competition analysis that you can do or things that people should look out for? I think it's kind of like, I know you mentioned YouTube. So it's similar in that no one's going to click on your video if you have a shitty thumbnail. It's the same thing with Etsy and listing images. So a lot of people will be like, why is my stuff not getting clicks? Like it's ranking, but I'm not getting clicks. I think the thumbnail is one of the most important things. That first listing image on Etsy is one of the most important things that you should focus on after you create a product. Because no matter how good your product is, no matter how much value it provides, if you don't have someone clicking in to read the description and just like figure out more about it, you're not going to make any sales. So I think that's like something that you can do even before you create the product. You go type in whatever product you're going to create on the Etsy search bar as a buyer, look at what the competition is doing and see how you can you know, add your competitive edge or how you can make your listing images a little more clickable. And so that's one thing. It's like the listing image is the gatekeeper to sales, kind of like the YouTube thumbnail is the gatekeeper to views. So make sure that is as good as possible and spend an inordinate amount of time on that main image instead of like, you can add up to 10 listing images in Etsy and some people will just like whip them all together, but you should be spending like a lot more time on that first image that people click into. Got it. And I take it similar to YouTube. You can have a look at the competition and see how they present things and maybe exactly. you want to you know, test and contrast with what's out there or you want to mimic what's out there. And I'm sure you have to test it or you don't know which one works, right? Yeah, I'm very data-driven. I know you are as well and your audience sounds like they are too. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all about testing. Like if you see that you're getting a ton of views and no clicks, you know that there's something wrong with either the title of your product or the thumbnail. So like start to fix those. If you're getting a ton of clicks, not no conversions, maybe you have a crappy description or maybe your pricing is too high or maybe it's just the wrong products. Like you're not targeting the right tags and the right keywords. So there's, there's all the different diagnoses you can do based on the reason you aren't selling. Perfect. Okay. So one thing I wanted to ask, and we kind of alluded to it earlier. So Etsy, it seems to be more female focused, right? Um, some of the products seem that way. I don't know what the demographic breakdown is, but I think, not always, but I, I, I think a lot of the people that watch my videos and listen to the podcast, it, there's more males. There's more males that listen and watch. So I think I want to talk about that a little bit. Like, is it an opportunity because there's not that many men on Etsy creating products and there's kind of, there's an opening that we could take advantage of? Or should that scare us away because we think, ah, it's, it's Etsy, you know, I'm not super interested. My wife's on there all the time, something like that. <laughs> so can you talk about that? And I'm trying to dance around and not, uh, you know, offend anyone, but basically more women are on Etsy. So what, what do we do with that? What does that mean? Yeah, no, you're totally right. There are way more women on Etsy. What I will say is that Etsy has been making a huge marketing push. And I think that presents a huge opportunity for us guys who might not be on Etsy. So if you were, let's go back to some of these B2B products. Let's, let's just use the podcast media kit again, the template. 
on Canva as an example. If you're searching some of these like products into Google, they're actually pulling a lot of Etsy search results now. So Etsy is putting a lot of marketing dollars into showing up and ranking on Google for these types of products. So if you're someone who's you know in any B2B niche or even B2C, and you will have like something that's, you know, you don't want like black skulls and crossbones on it because you, you don't want to target like the, the, the very, very masculine part of Etsy, which is like 0.1%. But there's a lot of like neutral type products or just B2B products in general that are like, you know, blue and green. And, you know, it doesn't have to be like all pink and flowers. That's not what Etsy is. Sure. Um, but yeah, they, just like the, the Google search results is the thing I'm most excited about. Like I've seen some of my stuff come up in Google search, like business to business templates and some of my other seasonal products. And you know, it's it's guys and girls looking for that. Like I've typed in templates before for like a podcast media kit. I've typed in like, you know, different examples for like, I've actually looked at a covered letter template before and just like all these random things that you wouldn't think of would kind of come up on Etsy via Google search, but it's happening. Awesome. Okay. So I, and I think, yeah, I think it does represent an opportunity, especially if Etsy's putting their ad marketing dollars behind it. That's, mm. uh. It's pretty amazing. So this is um this is pretty cool. Any other things that I didn't ask you that, you know, are, are relevant to that you want to talk about with Etsy printables? Let's see. I mean, I just think the biggest opportunity out there for those who have a site is to start to like co-mingle and incorporate. Cause I know we talked about before we hit record, most people are monetizing. And this is what I was monetizing on my blog before I discovered printables. It's like all affiliates and display ads, but like if you have printables, now you have your own product. You have complete control over the delivery, the pricing, the experience, everything. Now you get them into your ecosystem. If you're using freebies, you get them on your email list. Now you can like warm them up to upsell them to other products down the road, like courses and mentorship and all that stuff. So I just think there's a huge opportunity here for people who already have a blog, especially, I know you talked about the unfair advantage. If they already have keyword research knowledge, they're going to be ahead of 95% of Etsy sellers just the second they start. Okay. This is this is pretty cool. So, couple uh, I think probably more advanced questions, but this is where my brain goes to. So let's do it. There's there's an issue with creating your platform, or yeah, creating your platform on someone else's platform. So this is on Etsy's platform. They have a lot of control over it. Is there any downside to you know building your business on another platform like Etsy? I like diversification. I mean, it's the same with anything. It's the same with YouTube. It's the same with Instagram, like any of these platforms. Definitely take each platform with a grain of salt and know that, you know, of course, they can change things on you. What I do like and the reason why I'm so bullish on Etsy, I don't think I mentioned this before, but there's there's 100 million buyers on Etsy. So unlike, I know I mentioned this example earlier, if you were to just like, you know, add the WooCommerce extension to your website and start to sell stuff through there, like you'd have to drum up all of your own traffic. If people weren't like discovering you via Google search or like you had just a pop in blog, people aren't going to be buying your stuff. But on Etsy, same with Amazon, like people are coming to you because of keyword research and there's 100 million people searching on there. So that's like why that's the reason why I always recommend like even if you don't think oh, I'm not going to do Etsy, it's fine. I'm just going to do the Woo WooCommerce thing. Just like throw your products up on Etsy just because you already if you're already creating them anyway, it's just a huge marketplace for people to buy them. So, yes, of course, we got to be careful on anyone else's platform like that's why i'm so bullish on building an email list because yep. you control your list but it's a huge opportunity and if you're going to sit out just because you're like well what if etsy changes their algorithm well okay then they change their algorithm like whatever like you still have stuff on there and it was you were still making money before they changed it so i think it's i think it's an opportunity that we shouldn't waste okay second advanced question is can you sell these businesses so a lot of a lot of people want to build a business they like starting things and then they're like i want to start something new so can you say build up your Etsy store to like $1,000 a month and then sell it for 30K? Is that something that's possible? I have heard of people doing this and another interesting business model, it's not common. Another interesting business model is I've heard of people like paying a company a big startup fee. They'll pay them like, I don't know, 10 grand or something. And then that company will start to create digital products for them to sell on Etsy and on other places. And the company like retains 25% of profit or something and the person gets 75%. And so it's a very interesting business model. And I've heard of a couple of people doing it. And it's It's been successful for them. I don't have any personal experience with this. So I don't want to like talk too in depth. But I, yes, I have heard of people selling their shops. And I have heard of people doing these like joint venture deals. Gotcha. Yeah, my brain goes there just thinking like, <laughs> oh, you know, you can get, you know, all that revenue up front. And, you know, if you 
build it with the intent to sell it, you know, you maybe wouldn't get too emotionally attached to it. And, you know, it's part of the fun. So yeah, yeah, that's (laughs) something I may look into. Well, Cody, this is awesome. And, you know, you have the course out there. So can you tell us it's opening for enrollment and can you tell us about the course and then some of the details about this particular launch? Yeah. So we've definitely been revamping some stuff. As you know, systems are always changing, like Canva's changing stuff, Etsy's changing stuff. So we just did like a big course refresh, which has been super exciting. We have added a bunch of new templates to the course and we have like this VIP member vault where people have access to, I know I've been mentioning templates a lot. So just like it, literally using use template and now you have like a multi-page printable or digital product that you can mess with. Um, yeah, it's it's been re- it's been really exciting, man. Just like watching people go through and super rewarding getting kind of new droves of students in and helping them like just, even if they make their first dollar passive income, it's like, it's life changing for some people. Um, I guess what else is new about this launch is Julie and I over the past like six months or so, like really haven't been spending a lot of time on Etsy at all. Like, and that might sound like a bad thing, but what that's allowed us to do is like really prove the business model. Like Julie, my business partner is currently pregnant and she just like couldn't look at screens or whatever for like the past couple of months. So she like literally hasn't touched her shop and she's still been making like thousands every single month. So it was kind of a cool little experiment where I took time off from my shop. She took time off from her shop. So now we have these like case studies and we're kind of showing people like this is actually how you can put your shop on autopilot and like really not touch it or at least very, very little. Um, so yeah, lots, lots of exciting stuff, lots, lots of exciting updates. And we're just excited to help people who are interested in the side hustle get started. And I know you'll have a bunch of links for everybody in the course for the course. And we also have a free workshop that people can watch if the uh, if the course isn't open at the time. I'm not sure when people are watching this video. I'm sure it's going to be at all different times. But yeah, man, we'll uh, we'll get you all those links to to drop in the description and show notes and all that good stuff. Super. And when is the course open? What are the dates? So our next public launch is November 2nd to November 7th. And like I mentioned, if you're not watching this in that time frame, we have a free workshop that you can go and check out and we'll help you get started and, and k- kickstart you along the way. Awesome. Cody, this is amazing. Thanks for joining me. And I'm looking forward to catching up with you uh, pretty soon. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me on. It's always a blast.